Asking Corla, the arson attacks that we have seen in communities across different parts of Ireland are simply inexcusable. There is no justification for them, and the perpetrators do not represent the vast majority of people from those communities affected. They are the actions of a small number of nasty actors who are driven by hate. Their intention is to divide communities. This type of criminal damage and intimidation serves nobody. Lives are put at risk, and in a number of instances, buildings that weren't even going to be used for emergency international accommodation were burned simply due to the rumours circulated online by those same nasty actors. And there must be an adequate policing response to these attacks. In prevention, by monitoring and protecting the premises targeted, and in retrospect, by bringing those responsible to justice. And the inexcusable actions, and I think this needs to be said, of those engaged in criminality should be not be used to then dismiss or ignore what are genuine concerns of local communities that are actually being exploited by those same uh, actors. Last Concorla, the government have made an absolute mess of the asylum system. If they were to start with the intention of purposely antagonising local communities, then they would not have been able to do a better job. Government have made multi-millionaires of a small number of private companies and have left local communities to pick up the pieces. The situation at the D Hotel in Drogheda is one of the latest and probably one of the most stark examples of a failed approach. The only criteria considered by the department is the availability of a premise, premises. There is no consideration of the economic impact of the removal of a hotel, the main hotel in many cases, from a local community. No consideration as to the number of uh, um, existing asylum seekers housed in an area. No consideration as to the capacity of local services. No prior engagement with local elected representatives, community leaders, schools, GPs or other services. They just signed a lucrative contract with hotel owners and then informed everyone else that it was a done deal. And the actions of government ministers since, since trying to suggest alternative arrangements such as dual uses for the hotel simply exposes that there was no plan. Last concord, I want to say that there are lots of hotels struggling. Many of them have been crying out to government for support that government haven't provided. And instead, what's actually given is a message that the way in which they can overcome their challenges is actually to stop being a hotel. It is not good enough. If, a, if an asylum process is to work, then it has to be fair, it has to be efficient, and it has to be enforced. That's what Sinn Féin demand, not open borders, as some of those nasty actors try to suggest in their anonymous online rants. And for the system to be fair, we must recognise, first and foremost, the positive contribution of the vast majority of people who have made Ireland their home. But we all, must also recognise that Irish people, by and large, have been very welcoming and have gone out of their way to facilitate those who have come here in search of a better life. And then we must also recognise again that it is not fair to ask those communities who are living with the housing crisis, who are suffering as a result of government's failures in health and other public services, to simply suck it up when their last amenity, whether it be their local hotel or another business, is removed from its um, use without a single thought of the impact. We've seen, and I've seen, rural communities that have lost their local Garda station, who have lost their local post office, cannot get a GP appointment, and then wake up to learn that their last amenity, the local hotel, has been turned into an international emergency accommodation centre. It's a recipe for disaster, and government can't just scratch their heads wondering why people are angry and frustrated. The, the dependence on private operators then adds to the anger. People with genuine concerns watch as those operators make a literal fortune while their community is expected to deal with the outworking of government's failed approach. The failure of the parties opposite to implement their own plan to construct state-led accommodation centres isn't acceptable. The longer that they rely on a system that enriches a few and gives no consideration to any criteria other than the availability of a building, then the worse the problem will get. And despite all the promises, there has been no tangible supports for those communities that have actually accommodated large numbers of asylum seekers or Ukrainians. Lots of talk, but no meaningful um, su support. The two-tier international protection system, it must be acknowledged, that was applied after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, while understandable um, considering the emergency situation, but it has added to the sense of unfairness. 
the temporary measures for Ukrainians end in a year. And following that, in my view, we must return to a single asylum process, and a plan for that has to be put in place now. To be efficient means that applications for international protection must be processed quickly. It still takes far, far too long. Some of those who are applying for international protection wait years for a decision to be made. And that's unfair on them. It's also unfair on new arrivals who are forced to sleep on the streets because places are being taken up by those who are actually waiting too long. For those who are successful in their application, we have to do more to support them, to play an active role in our society, to help them to get the jobs that we need workers for and to play a positive role in enhancing our communities. And then those that are not successful must leave. And that might sound harsh, but it is the only way to ensure that the system actually works. It's not good enough, simply not good enough, that the government cannot, even at this stage, confirm that all those who have been refused international protection have actually left. And without that assurance, the view that the system isn't enforced feeds into the frustration that I referenced earlier. And it adds to the obvious capacity issues that are obvious to everyone, except it appears to this government. Those who have come to Ireland in search of a better life deserve the same respect as we would expect to be afforded to Irish people who move abroad. And the vast, vast majority of Irish people are welcoming, accommodating and compassionate. What they want is an asylum system that is fair, efficient and enforced. And it's time for that to be delivered. In the meantime, anger should be directed at those responsible for the current failures, this government, and not at those who are living in emergency accommodation and who themselves simply came to Ireland because they want what is best for their families. Those that exploit the genuine concerns and frustration through online manipulation and worse, through criminal damage to property and the endangering of innocent lives must be faced down by all right-thinking people.